Hey everybody, welcome to Rotter to Brief. Today I want to talk about my Fowlery Tang. It's going to be this little beauty right here. How you guys doing? Happy Saturday. <clears throat> Get some footage of this guy first. This video is going to be on this guy, the Fowlery Tang. Sorry about the glare. Hey, Bronx. So this is a live stream. Been doing these every Saturday morning. I'm talking to the subscribers. Hey, everybody. Hope your weekend is good. Even though it was a short week for most, I barely made it to the weekend. The sun's hitting this tank pretty hard. But I wanted to talk about this Fowlery Tang, this beautiful fish. Hey Rob, what's up? There's a Naso Tang video on that guy coming soon. So let me just, <clears throat> I'll put this down. I'll do a quick talk about this guy. And then I'll feed the fish, and I'll tell you what's going on with the tank. There he is. This video is about that guy. So, three years ago, this coming March, I walked into one of my favorite reef stores, Beyond the Reef in Schaumburg. Really great customer service. One of my favorite stores. Fish are always healthy, and you can always know that they're going to have some exotic different types of fish. So I wanted a coal tang, and I had a 75-gallon tank at the time, and I, you know, I wanted a coal tang. A coal tang is, looks just like the yellow tang, but it's got the coloration of the Fowlery tang, and the coal tang is really awesome. They don't get big. They stay the same size as the yellow tang, and they're really great at eating algae off the rock as most tangs are. So I go in there, come to find out they don't have any coal tangs. And then one guy who was working there is like, hey, let me show you something. And he showed me this guy. He says, you ever hear of a Fowlery tang? And the guy, I've never seen him working in the store. I guess he was filling in for somebody. He was someone's cousin or something like that. Hey, Cruz, what's up, man? Nice to see you. Thanks for joining, everybody. So I go in. I'm like, man, I don't want to spend the money on this fish. Johnny, what's up? Because <clears throat> this dude, so my birthday is in March. So I justified, well, I'll get him as a birthday present to myself. <laughs> This guy was about $250, I think. They gave me a discount because um, I shopped there a lot. And I didn't want to spend that kind of money. For one, I totally don't have any money, usually ever. And, But he was really beautiful. He was about half the size. I, hey, fellow reefer, what's up? I love the looks of the guy, and I'm like, how big does he get, this and that. So I put him in my 75 gallon tank, just a gorgeous deep blue. He's got so much beautiful detail on him. Now, you guys can't really see it, but he's got gorgeous detail, beautiful markings on his body, his orange, the fins, they just come out, they're gorgeous. And underneath him, he's got like a lightning blue neon thin stripe. Hey fellow reefer, what's up? <clears throat> I do not have any reactors in this tank. I have nothing. And I'll show you that sump when I'm done here. So you can see the little thin lightning blue strip, neon. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Long story short, he got to be too big for my 75-gallon tank. And I actually brought him back to the store to trade him in. And I didn't want to. And they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll totally take him back. We'll give you full store credit because he's such a beautiful fish. He's not like a regular fish because usually they won't give credit. And I looked at my five gallon Home Depot 
orange bucket where he was chilling out in. And they're like, this dude is such a nice laid back fish. He went the whole 45 minute drive to the store, no issues, no splashing, took the lid off the bucket, just chilling out, being really nice. I'm like, I can't part with this fish. And I only did it for his own benefit because I didn't want him crammed in a 75 gallon aquarium, which was four feet long. This tank is six feet long. Now, this is a 125 gallon saltwater tank. <clears throat> And I wound up getting this tank because, well, I needed more room for that guy. So because of him, that's the main reason I got my 125 gallon tank. I wanted more swim space for him. Now, these guys, they need more tank space than this. He's totally fine in here, but I'd like to get like a 265. My ideal goal is if ever I get another tank, to be honest, I'm really happy with this one. These guys aren't really that crowded in here at all. But I'd like to get an 8-foot long tank. Brazil, what's up? Pro, Corando, Nemo. I don't know how to read that. But from Brazil. Are you saying you're from Brazil? Um, your fellow reefer just ordered $300 worth of fish from Live Aquaria. You know, you want to know about Live Aquaria? Well, a lot of people do not like them at all. Um, I ordered from them once, and I won't order from them again. I've never ordered a fish from them. I ordered a coral from them. The first time I got a, a coral from them, it was uh, an empty bag with a, a stick in it, a, a, a tree branch stick. It was not a coral. It was from a tree. Um, looked like a Q-tip was in the bag. So... They sent me another coral. That coral had a dead Duncan head in it. Um, it took about four or five months for that Duncan head to grow. My wife said, take, just take it out, it's dead. And I knew it was dead, but I was so angry and stubborn, as always, that I just left it in there. I figured, you know what, even if it's dead, I'm going to leave it in the tank. Well, this is that coral now. It's got five heads on it. It's still waking up because I just turned the lights on. But anyway, I said I'm never going to order from them again. That's just my experience. I'll never order a fish online. I like to go and see them in person. But some people don't have that option, and that's fine. But as always, I don't care where you get them from, always quarantine the fish. Now, at Beyond the Reef in Schaumburg, where I get most of my guys from, um, that's where most of these guys came from, um... Oh, the Mandarin is out. There he is. I'm not going to get any closer because and he'll run away, but there he is. Um, <clears throat> beyond the reef, they always keep their fish in a subtle solution of copper. So that's really good, and that prevents the ick. But they even do say, we recommend you still quarantine your fish. So... I wound up keeping the Fowlery Tang, also known as a Fowler's Tang. Now, I'm going to read you a little something on the Fowlery Tang, because to be honest, I don't remember all the facts on these fish. But I've seen them online go anywhere up to like $700, which is really pricey. So let me just read you this. <clears throat> the Fowlery Tang, also known as the Black Spine Surgeon Fish. And they call them surgeon fish because tangs, if you see them back up into one another, they have a little spike that comes out. It's actually part of their spine, and they use that to fight. It's razor sharp, and it's dangerous. Like a scalpel will come out, and they'll fight. Um, I've never had an issue. These guys always get along great. So that's where the surgeon fish name comes from. It's one of the more beautiful saltwater fish, a blue head with characteristic arcing lines behind the eyes, sets the species apart from other tangs. A brown body, yellow dorsal fin, and white lyre accent the tail also make this specimen a true standout. It is a gorgeous fish. In person, it's just amazing. Um, in its natural habitat, the Fowlery Tang is generally found in clear seaward reefs and drop-offs. A 360-gallon or larger established aquarium with large amounts of rock is necessary to provide both plenty of swimming room 
and territories within the rock. As you can see, I'm failing on that. Although tangs will eat meaty foods along with other fish in the aquarium, it's important that, they off, that they're offered plenty of marine-based seaweed and algae, because tangs are herbivores, so you've got to provide that stuff for those guys. And I feed them bok choy and collard greens from the grocery store, and they love it. Um, the seaweed and algae will strengthen their immune system, reduce aggression, and improve their overall health. So I lost you guys. The appropriate purchase size is two to three inches with these guys, and they're just outstanding fish. They're very laid back, very docile. Just look at look at all these guys, just chilling out. So there's the Fowlery Tang. If you guys can find them, I highly recommend them. I got them for 250 bucks. You can get them online for like, I don't know, three to four hundred dollars I've seen a couple places seven hundred dollars really expensive fish so that's the deal with that so <clears throat> I'll talk more about the other fish but I just wanted to this is like Dave what's up dude this is like my show fish and the guy at the reef store was like well you gotta have a display show fish I'm like dude I can't afford 250 bucks but I did I just got the tax return a few years ago and I picked him up. Love him. Love him. He was supposed to be the only large fish in my tank. But as you can see, I visited a new reef store that's really close to home and I walked out with a naso and a sailfin. These two guys I bought together. I had no intention of getting them, but he's like, so which one do you want? I'm like, screw it. Just give me both of them because I can't decide. So I've got the three large fish. Then, of course, shortly before then came the fox face. These dudes, he's like eight inches long, nine inches long. He grew much larger than he did when I got him as a baby. I love the fox face. His name is Spike because his spikes come up and they're venomous. I keep forgetting that they're venomous. Dangerous if you get stuck by them, but he's so not aggressive. Fox face fish are gorgeous. We got a fox face, a naso tang, a sailfin tang. That reminds me of my Distargini tang that died shortly after I bought him. I think he had issues. He just wouldn't eat. I love that fish. So I got a sailfin tang. Looks great. Um, Naso, I said. Fowlery tang or fowler's tang in the back. And five Nemo fish. Five clownfish. I think three, two Ocellaris, two Picassos, and one Da Vinci. I love the Picasso. Oh, no. One Da Vinci, one Picasso, one Snowflake clown, and two Ocellaris. The Ocellaris are the Nemo fish. So that's it for that. So now filling you guys in. I got some hair algae I keep brushing off with a toothbrush. It's driving me mad. There are some rather large pieces of hair algae I have to get rid of. You see that there floating? That's embarrassing and it's very disturbing. Right there. These reactors, I don't use any reactors at all. Um, I've got the protein skimmer and sump number one. Which is on for six hours a day now only. That's it. Water comes in. Protein skimmer, water goes out. This sump, homemade as you've seen before, is connected with a PVC pipe. It's got the refugium that's growing. The light. N20 light. So then my light is going to be taken down and I've got a grow light coming. It was like $45. So it really will grow that Chiato and the refugium a lot better, a lot faster. That Chiato is gonna house the little copepods and amphipods, and it's going to get the nitrates out of the system. So today, I'm gonna do a water change and get a lot more of this hair algae out of here. This hair algae is locking up the phosphates and nitrates. I gotta get it out of the system and do a decent water change. 
because it's st it's starting to grow more and take over the tank a little bit. You can see the coralline algae, which is great. That's what you want. But all this green stuff, I have to get in there with a toothbrush. I might try the phosphate RX again, just to try and lower those phosphates and loosen everything up. So that's it. I literally have no filtration in here. Once I get everything set up in the new light, I'll put my rotter tube in here. I'll turn off the protein skimmer. The main reason I'm turning off the protein skimmer like 18 hours a day is to let the stuff actually filter through the system. I'm relying more on the biological aspect of filtering. I'm letting the rocks and the sand and the copepods and amphipods and the plankton, uh, phytoplankton and all that take care of this tank naturally. So I've got nothing and I dose nothing. I just do water changes every week of 10%. So that's it. I literally have water coming into the refugium, going out. I've got water coming into the second sump and going out. There's no filtration. And I read that people are like, well, do I clean my refugium? Do I get rid of it? Your best bet is to just never clean it, never touch it, let it capture all that stuff because the plankton, phytoplankton, copepods, amphipods, they're going to live there. They're going to eat the detritus, which is fish waste and the uneaten food, and it's going to be like a, a cesspool of nasty, but that's what those little critters eat and they thrive on, and it's beneficial to your tank and your coral. Everything's kind of waking up. Star polyps are looking really good. I removed this rock bridging between here so the star polyps cannot get on this side. This is going to be my star polyp colony. As you see, it's doing really well. Uh, more of a gap for the fish to swim through. And then when I get some more money, this side is going to be more coral. I'm going to get some more orange and red colored coral to really pop. These zoanthids are really nice, but it's kind of a reddish color of the rock, which is purple, which is the coralline algae. I really like it, but there's no there's no contrast between the coral and the rock. So I want to get more colors, and right now this is the only thing that pops. This Duncan coral has got, God, easily 20 heads on it, maybe 30. I'd like to take that somewhere and frag it because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'll have to look at some videos on that possibly. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. And thanks for your help too, VK. So I never really ran reactors because I'm not one for keeping up on stuff. Because what if you take too much of this out of the tank and too much out of that and you dose too much of this and then you've got to add you know, calcium because that counteracts this. It's like a balancing game, you know? So I'm just trying natural nature. I use Red Sea Coral Pro Salt, which is really good. I've got Miracle Mud, which I've seen a difference. The tank looks more crystal clear. These fish look like they're floating in air. The back of the tank has got algae. see it and it won't focus anyway let me feed these guys so you guys can see that I know you enjoy watching them eat and they love to eat so I'm gonna get some seaweed right now rods food seaweed and then I'm gonna feed them rods food let me turn off these pumps really quick or the power heads so it uh, lowers the current not much flow going on in this tank By the way, I want to thank everybody for watching, and don't forget to check out our Facebook group. Check out the video description and link below. And I also have links to everything I use, pretty much, for the most part, in my tank. If you want to buy that stuff, if you like what I'm using, I put links right to the stuff on Amazon, so you can just buy what I'm using or check out what I'm using. Um, thanks. 
I'm approaching 8,000 subscribers, which is totally outstanding. Hey, your fellow reefer. Yeah, Scott and I are going to do live streams together. Um, it's just a matter of, like, I've been so busy, and then I had the flu, but we're going to do that. Um, we're going to do more of those, maybe once a month. Uh, what else was I going to tell you guys? As a side note, um, my other YouTube channel, Rotter Studios, I'm doing movie reviews and silly stuff with friends, movie geeks. It's really funny. It's a good time if you want to check it out. Video uh, description has the link to Rotter Studios. It's also got my photography and video production and stop motion animation. Um, that's all I really wanted to say. 8,000 subscribers approaching. I never thought I'd see that day. I never thought I'd see 100 subscribers, to be honest. But I appreciate you all so much. Times like this, I wish I was a girl with, you know, large breasts because then I'd have, you know, $20,000 a month coming in. But I don't. So I'll settle for, you know, a candy bar a month. Let me feed these dudes. Yeah, they do. <laughs> it's weird because they don't follow anyone else. My wife will walk past the tank. They don't care. Yeah, that Taylor Nicole chick. Whatever. You know what I found kind of silly, and I'll say it because I'm an honest person. I saw. I don't even. I don't ever watch that channel because I've got nothing to gain by it. But. Like, she had some show where she set up, like, a saltwater tank, and she was talking about her new coffee mug that she got while some dude came into her house and set up her small 40-gallon saltwater tank, which I thought was amazing. She's having some guy come over, set up a tank, and leave, and then she's like, well, here it is, my new tank. You know what? I looked her up, you guys... She was, you know, just a regular YouTuber doing nothing. And more power to her, but she did a couple of videos that luckily got seen. And then she quit her job because she was making like $1,800 a month because she still lives at home. Check this out. She's got over a million subscribers now, which is ridiculous. And she's making about $30,000 a month. Yeah, that... To me, does not make any damn sense. Am I jealous? No. Do I wish I had that money? Of course. But she's not, like, saving lives. She's talking about her coffee mug. She's talking about the new picture she hung on her wall. I don't know. Am I bitter? Kind of, because there's a lot of garbage on YouTube that shouldn't be making money, especially that kind of money. Am I saying her channel is garbage? No. She puts a lot of work and time into it. But it just amazes me that, like, a lot of us have got, like, informative videos. And we put a lot of work into it. A lot of you guys do unboxing videos. You set it up. You demonstrate stuff. You teach. People learn. I've seen all your guys' videos, most of them, and they're awesome. Look at CJ, man. That dude is not making anywhere near anything just like the rest of us and then here she comes anyway rant over rant over but i wanted to bring that up to you guys so if you want to do a youtube channel just do it man because you if you get passed around and people like you you can make the money it takes a long time 
but you could do it. Let me get some frozen rods food now. Yeah, I scope around the web. I see you guys. I don't have time to leave comments on everybody's channel. But there was a time where I used to go through my subscriber list and I would send thank yous to every person who subscribed. A quick little note, customized. And I do watch a lot of your videos. Just don't have time to comment on all of them. But I do check them out. Yeah, guys, I just want to make it clear, not that I truly care because I don't really care what people think, but here's frozen rods food. This is great for the corals and the fish. This is not a slam against Taylor, Nicole, whatever her last name is or whatever. You know, again, more power to her. That's really great. If people like her and they can take moments out of their day to watch her for whatever reason, that's great. I'm just saying that that's just, in my opinion, Way too much money. I, I, I don't know. Just like they're, my, my kids, they're little, and they watch these seven-year-olds playing with toys. Like, parents are literally uploading their home movies to YouTube daily or twice a day, and they're making sick bank. Sick bank. Look up Ryan's toy review. The kid could barely talk, and his mom had the camera on him three times a day, the kid's making like a million dollars a month. Anyway, do a YouTube channel, guys. This channel and my Rotter Studios movie review channel are my two main channels. And then there's the Joker box, but I don't spend that much time on it. God, I'm seeing more hair algae in here than I really want to. And these fish are not eating it. Yeah, and um, the, the kids are really cute. My kids are really cute. Um, thank you. I just can't... You know what? I should. I thought maybe I'll just literally upload. I'll just film them five minutes a day and upload it every day. I just can't bring myself to do that because I think it's silly. But maybe I should try it. I don't know. So I'm really happy with the way this tank is looking. Hey, Ron. I had a lawnmower, Blenny. I named them Kermit, and I can't find him. I think he died. I got to get another one. I'm going to get another one, and he never went after the green algae. I thought about getting a, what do you call it, a white line, thin line crab. I can't remember the name, but so someone wanted to see Leia. Let me bring you over to her. Hey, Lammy, what are you doing? Who said you can be on the couch? <laughs> this is her bed now. Hi, baby. Mm. Hello, sweeties. She's so soft, so loving, and so laid back. She loves the kids. But her furnace went out last week, and the furnace guy came in. She was not having that at all. She, she's eight months old now, and she did not want any part of that guy in her house. Right, baby? Yes. Good girl. So there's Leia chilling out. She's a really good girl. Jack's chilling out by Daddy. He's unfortunately blind from the diabetes. Oh, you know what she likes to do when the door is open? She likes to go in there and she noses through and she eats the nori. Or she tries to. She loves it. Not bad for you, but. So that's the deal with the tank. Oh, it's not going to come today, but I've got. Okay.
And I keep losing connection here. But you know what, guys and girls? Again, I really love talking with you, and I, I love my channel, and I love showing you this stuff because you like to see it. That means a lot to me. And um, this is a, a fun hobby. It's expensive. It's really frustrating. If you guys have any questions, ask, and I'll do the best I can to answer them. Go to the Facebook page. Join Rotter 2 Brief Club because there's so many people on there with questions, and they're more than willing to help. I really appreciate that, too. WD-40. So that's it for now. There's the tank. Thanks for watching. I will be in touch with you guys as always. And the next video I'm going to show you is the light that I got off Amazon. There's actually a link to that right now. The light for the refugium. I'm going to do my best to clean this hair algae out of this tank today. That's driving me nuts. It just, it's like a cancer. It just will not go away. I, I hate it. I'll see you guys later. Have an awesome weekend and stay warm. Hey.